Hi everyone, this is Jyoti here. I'm the senior product manager for AWS DeepLens, this tiny little device that is sitting on the table here. Before me, there were two other presenters who used VR. Now I'm going to use the next two letter buzzword, which is ML and CV. So when you look at this, it has a camera, and so everybody thinks this is a video camera which can stream things up into the cloud and then probably do some analytics. But actually, DeepLens is not a video camera. It is the world's first deep learning enabled developer kit. What I mean by that is there is a GPU sitting right on this device which is capable of running advanced machine learning models. So your inference is actually running right on the device. You don't have to be connected to the cloud for maybe say some simple applications like object detection, counting people. So essentially what we are trying to do is make this really accessible for developers to be able to iterate fast and develop machine learning applications really quickly. So at Amazon, we have been using AI for many years. And as part of that, what we learned was that it's, it's not easy to develop machine learning applications. It requires to do many several iterations. Just like how the first time you write your code, you don't ship it. There is always a iterative cycle you go through. Similarly, even for machine learning, there is an iterative cycle. And what we wanted to do was make that iteration really easy and more practical. So while you develop your model, you deploy it, you see it in action, you look at the real world accuracy, not just an image, but the real world accuracy, and then you tune your model. And we, dis and we developed this keeping in mind that we wanted to target different skill sets. Um, essentially, those people who have no machine learning experience, we wanted to make it really easy for someone to develop machine learning applications. So let's say you have, um, you have um, an advertising company and you want to detect the number of people who are watching at your billboard. Now, I don't expect you to go and learn about machine learning and what gradient descent is and all of that just to develop the simple application. So what we wanted to do was make it really easy for application-oriented machine learning. So that's the reason why we started with six sample projects. You have um, sample projects like object detection that you could take and deploy straight to your deep lens and start with uh, detecting about 30 different objects. You also have face detection and the model that's running on the device right now is face detection. And um, what I'm running is it's capturing your faces and then um, identifying the emotions. There are six emotions that it's detecting right now, which is happy, sad, confused, angry, and calm. Yes, so at the end of the session, I'll, um, I'll um, open the dashboard to show you the metrics of how the session was. Um, and it's been running since the starting, so it's captured a lot of historic data too. Um, you can also, um, so yeah, you, the other one, which is the hot dog, no hot dog, um, is, uh, um, is an inspiration from a very famous Silicon Valley sitcom. Um, and it became really famous during reInvent, where um, we said, um, it can, the model can detect whether it's a hot dog or not a hot dog, and if it detected a hot dog, it would send a message to your phone saying hot dog detected. Essentially trying to show um, that your applications don't have to be just machine learning, but could be integrated with your other um, IoT devices or your other applications like your email, phone, SNS services, etc. You cannot just use just these six projects. Let's say you have your own um, developed model and you want to test it out. You can deploy your own custom model onto DeepLens. And also, you can create and extend the functionality of a model, just like the hot dog, no hot dog. So there's a hot dog model right on the uh, device. And so you can say, hey, I want to use the hot dog, but I want to add some other functionality to it. Or for example, let's say cat versus dog, and say you have a dog, and you want to detect when your dog is sitting on the couch and send a message to you saying your dog is on the couch. So essentially, you use the cat versus dog project 
and you developed an additional layer of functionality because you can now integrate it with Lambda functions, you can integrate with S3, you can integrate it with DynamoDB, you can integrate it with SageMaker. So you, you pretty much can integrate it with other cloud services such that you can do partial filtering uh, recognition on the device and then do advanced capabilities on the cloud. So you could do both. You could either uh, completely decide to do on the device, and so it will be called on device inference, or you may choose to do a hybrid inference where you do a filtering on the device and a more advanced capability on the cloud. I know everyone's really curious of what the specifications are. There's a rundown list. I'm not going to go on the rundown list, but I want to give you guys a few highlights from this. It has a 100 gigaflops uh, performance capability, and we, we collaborated with Intel, and so it has an Intel Atom processor. Um, it has several extensions, um, like USB ports and micro HDMIs that will allow you to connect to other devices um, and sensors if you want. And the camera itself is a four megapixel camera, um, and it has a 1080p uh, resolution. Um, the inference runs at 15 frames per second, and there is a H.264 uh, encoding, which is at uh, 30 frames per second. For all the geeks out here, and I, this hall is filled with smart individuals. And so I, want, I just have one slide here that talks about the inner workings, uh, more like showcasing what happens underneath the hood. So essentially, you can integrate Deep Lens with any of the AWS services in the cloud. So let it, for example, say SageMaker. Um, you can develop your models in Amazon SageMaker and the trained models can be deployed to Deep Lens securely by using AWS Greengrass. And, and this deployment is taken care of by the Greengrass functionality and the service itself. And um, every, every deployment that you do has a Lambda function associated with it. And the Lambda function does three things. It does pre-processing, wherein you take your model the model that you deploy, let's say it has a 30 by 30 uh, dimension or a 300 by 300 dimension. Essentially, what your Lambda function does is takes the video frame and chunks them into an MJPEG layer, which can then be resized into the dimension that your model was trained on, essentially trying to make sure what it was trained on and what it is inferring is in the same uh, parameters. And after it does uh, pre-processing, it also does the model inference. So model is nothing but a bag of parameters. And so what this Lambda function does is takes the frame, which is essentially the video, and runs it against the uh, machine learning model to identify uh, your inference, which is essentially your predicted output. And once it gets your output, um, the Lambda function does the third job, which is essentially uh, displaying the output. It could be displayed over a computer, which is uh, Ubuntu is the operating system on this. So it's essentially like your Ubuntu Linux um, computer. So you can connect it to a monitor and a keyboard setup, and you essentially get your Ubuntu screen. Um, or you can also send it up into, uh, you can view it in IoT console, or you can view it up anywhere else you want to integrate it with, let's say, um, Amazon recognition video, for example. So it can do three functionalities, which is pre-processing, um, inference, and also the output. And there are two streams on the device, which is the project stream, which is where you would see your model inference, and there is also the device stream in case if you want to see the raw video. So now you have seen or heard about the different applications uh, of how the device itself is, but I wanted to showcase some applications of how the developers are using it. We ran a hackathon. We launched this at reInvent uh, in 2017, at, in, at November. And we launched a hackathon in November, um, essentially calling in all developers to develop some interesting applications. We were really amazed by the applications that came through. The first place went to Alex, and he developed a reading application for his children. Essentially, the child would bring the storybook in front of Deep Lens, and Deep Lens would read the storybook to, to the child, because the child was still too young to read the storybook. And Alex had zero machine learning experience, and he was very new to AWS. So this was very heartwarming for us, because we were like, 
This is exactly the kind of target segment that we were developing this for, is to make it really easy for people to develop machine learning applications without having to know about machine learning. The second place went to Matthew, who also developed a very interesting learning application for his child. Essentially, he had these picture cards in front um, of the table, and Deep Lens would ask a question, saying, um, show me what has uh, two wheels, and there would be like a picture cards. And his child had to go and search for the card and find a bicycle. And it would, he would show the bicycle and then it would say, good job. And let's say he showed an airplane and then uh, Deep Lens would return an answer saying, um, this is not, uh, maybe this is not the right one. Search for a one that has a handle or provide some clues, etc." The third place went um, for a, a team that made a security application, essentially trying to make sure that uh, those visitors entering your children's room are someone who is authorized just trying to develop a safety application. And there were many more such applications that came through. Like for example, someone developed a yoga pose trainer, uh, essentially not having requiring you to go all the way to your yoga place, but instead being able to do it right in your house and deep lens would correct and identify your poses and, uh, and, uh, and your postures. And so there were many such applications that came through and uh, one person took it into the dog park to identify the dog breeds, for example. So it's, it's really uh, interesting to see um, how people are looking at, at making it really easy. Um, and one, one of my colleague actually um, has his son who just turned into a teenager and so he started driving and so he was very uh, scared. And so he put a deep lens into the car to detect his distracted driving. Like whenever he gets distracted while driving, it would alert him. I'm sure he's not popular at home now. <laughs> so the, um, the model that I'm running right now is essentially um, identifying or detecting the emotions of the audience. And I wanted to show a quick uh, overview of how that's run and then um, show you on the dashboard. So this was again a hackathon project um, wherein um, the team had no experience with ML, uh, but they developed uh, an interesting application to detect the audience emotions or sentiment analysis. So ideally what happens here is the model is trained on SageMaker wherein it is trained to detect faces and it is deployed to your deep lens using the Lambda function. And on the device, it detects your faces and then it takes only the picture where there is a face and sends it up into the cloud and it's integrated with Amazon recognition where it calls the uh, recognize emotions API. And once it recognizes the emotions, it is then uh, pulled into a dashboard via um, CloudWatch and the table is it's populated in DynamoDB. So you can see several different services that have been able to integrate with just one uh, service, which is Deep Lens. You may ask if I could, if at the end of the day, if I was just streaming it up into the cloud, what's the benefit of it? Imagine streaming all the video up into the cloud without having, maybe there's, there's no noise, or maybe there is a noise in there, or maybe there is no person detected in front of it, and you're still streaming the video up into the cloud to detect and say, person not found. Instead, what this does is it reduces your bandwidth and your costs because now it sends only that frame where a person was detected up into the cloud, which means that now you cut your bandwidth by more than a half because you're only using it or you're, uh, you're use, using your bandwidth only when it detects your face and not when a face is not detected. And as I was sitting there um, and running through the application when there were other speakers here, especially when speakers used to turn this way, it would not detect because there was no face and so there would be nothing that would show up. And in my dashboard, I would see null zero, which means it's not detected. And as soon as someone turns like the way I'm facing you or turns this way, it starts detecting that there is a face and only sends that stream up into the cloud. So let's see it in action. And when I show you, you'll see, um, especially when um, the HTC Vive presentation was going on and we saw that video, sorry? 
Okay. And we saw that video up there um, of the person uh, who's never skied 15 years, for the past 15 years, uh, you could see an emotion of sadness go rise high up among the audience, showing that all of us were really empathetic and emotional, emotionally attached to that video. So I'm not sure how visible it is, but I'm trying to make at least few people see the graph to know that I'm not just talking and I'm really meaning what I'm talking. Um, so if you can see, there are like multiple graphs here, and each one um, is corresponding to an emotion. There are five emotions out there, happy, sad, calm, confused. There was one called disgusted. I don't know why it's not detecting disgusted now. Maybe nobody's disgusted here. Um, <laughs> so if you see, there was this one one sharp line out here, which essentially, yeah, so the way that the uh, device is designed is it the inference is happening locally on the device. So it's not going anywhere up. And, and even if you're streaming up, um, it has uh, uh, secure uh, applications. And so it would, it would not be something that you just display it over. So you'll have to follow your regular uh, privacy and regular uh, concerns. And you'd have to follow through all your uh, regulations the right way. This is, this is just, I'm just showcasing the capability. Yeah, so um, I've heard a lot of different applications come through um, that people are using it. Like there was one uh, team who is working on using this to count people in a meeting room. And then if there is no one in the meeting room, then declare it open, for example, rather than having to book. And then maybe someone doesn't show up. So this could be used different ways. Uh, right now, this is targeting. Uh, developers and those people who want to uh, really make it easy for learning machine learning. Um, so that we, we are still seeing that there is a curve. And I'm, we are, I'm targeting the one where people are um, uh, learning machine learning. And so this is more like a developer-friendly tool. Um, and so for those of you who saw very, very little of that graph, um, Catch me on after the session, and I'll be happy to show you the graph. Um, I wanted to leave you with three important takeaways. Um, if anybody here wants, uh, in their organization, a hands-on session uh, with DeepLens, wherein your colleagues and your team is trained on machine learning and how to use computer vision, uh, reach out to your um, account teams and uh, reach out to us. We are doing it for free. We would come to your campus, bring deep lenses out there. We'll train your team. And at the end of the session, you will have, uh, we'll leave back one device with your team for prototyping and testing. And, and you can also order for deep lenses um, on uh, amazon.com. We start shipping on June 14. So what you're seeing is something that is not shipping yet. Um, and you can also learn more about the interesting projects I mentioned to you about in our community projects page. And so I, I hope you guys like the session. Thank you so much.